So here's a real simple way of looking at the end times and the rapture and all that stuff. Here it is. Ready? At one moment in time, God gives everyone exactly what they want. Those who want to be with Jesus and his people will be with him. Those who want a world without Jesus and with without the church and without his people, right, will get exactly what they want. And he's going to do all of this at one moment in time. That's a simplified version of eschatology. Eschatology just means the study of end times events. And this is exciting because in this episode, we're going to be looking at what people call the great reset. This is what a lot of globalists and a lot of these elites in the world, like the uh, World Economic Forum and others have talked about and the big corporation leaders, they want a great reset. Well, they might just get that. God might grant them exactly what they want. And he might take his people, his bride, the church away. He's going to tell Jesus, hey, you've prepared this place. It's finished. Go get your bride. <laughs> hey, we're going to look at that in this episode. I'm so excited about it. Let's look at this right now. So the end times, guys, real simple stuff. Here's a picture of what a lot of these globalists like. You see these hands of different color in the globe, and they're really into finding, uh, getting rid of religion, right? Things like that. And they want this one world government. But the end times are very simple. God just simply gives you your desires, right? That's what God does. God doesn't want people to like not get what they want. He gives everyone what the fact he, he is the most pro-choice of anybody, not pro-choice as in killing babies. He despises that, but pro-choice for each individual to decide if they want to be with his son, God, the son, Jesus, or not. It's your decision, but he won't force you. He doesn't want to force anybody to go to heaven or to believe in his son. And he gives you choice. But this world wants what? What do they want, you guys? They want this one world without God, without Jesus, without his people, right? And that's what we're looking at. So the end times is basically this God at one moment in time. I think this is how the rapture is going to happen. One moment gives everyone exactly what they want. God gives you your desires. Don't believe me? Right here, look at this scripture. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. God, therefore God gave them over in their in the desires, right? The desires of what? Of their heart, what they really want. That's what God does. The scripture even tells us that. He gives them over to their desires. So if they want a world without the church, without Jesus, they're going to get that. God will make sure that happens for, for those who want that. And it'll happen in one moment in time, in a blink of an eye. Believers like me or like you, if you're a believer in Jesus, we will in a less than a blink of an eye, less than a fraction of a second, we are going to be in the presence of Jesus, our Lord. And we'll be with him after that forever and ever. The scriptures tell us that. And we're going to be looking at that here in a moment. This is so exciting, you guys. Here we go. All right. So if you want, if you say no to Jesus and his people, the church, hey, God's going to hit that reset button for you guys. The great reset will happen just like you guys want it'll happen if you don't believe in jesus you're gonna get that so the one world without the right wing basket of deplorables right you've heard that before you're gonna get it that's what god will give you this whole one world idea like we can have this peace without religion without heaven or hell like that song was so wrong by the way it, that's not how it's gonna happen you guys there is a heaven there is a hell and you can pretend it doesn't exist, but that doesn't mean it it, it just vanishes. It, just because it's your truth doesn't mean it's not the truth, <laughs> all right? And some people have a problem with that whole thing about truth today. Like, your truth isn't his truth, and, you know, truth is relative to each person. No, that's garbage, you guys. That's not true. That's an attack on God because God is the absolute truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was describing himself. He is the truth. So there is an absolute truth. And if you don't believe me, if you say there's no absolute truth, are you absolutely sure about that? 
<laughs> All right, let's get back into it, guys. Okay, so this whole idea of this one world earth, um, that's what I believe is going to happen. The end times, God will gives you your desires. He will give you guys that opportunity, those of you that reject Jesus. Suddenly and unexpectedly, it'll happen. At one moment in time, God will give everyone exactly what they want. And it will be a great reset. And that's what you guys want. You'll get it. <laughs> so the end times again. God, it's so simple. God just gives everyone exactly what they desire, you guys. The whole world at one moment in time. So those who desire Jesus and his people, those who love Jesus and listen to his voice and follow him and, his, and love the church and his people, guess what? You will be with Jesus and his people and this will be the great harvest, you guys. Just like, like Joseph's story, right? The great harvest. That's what we see in his story. And what do we see in his story? There was, there was this, be, before the seven-year time of great trouble, the famine, there was seven years of great abundance or a great harvest. And it also reminds us, what? Of Romans chapter 11, verse 25. It says, when that full number of Gentiles has come to Christ, then all of Israel will be saved. When were they saved in Joseph's story? During the seven-year time of the famine, the great trouble. That's when they were saved. Isn't that amazing how those stories... And if you haven't checked out, check this videos, this, these videos out right now, this playlist, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. We're going through Joseph right now, and we're seeing how his story paints the picture for us of the plan of God in the end times, the eschatology that God has through the story of Joseph. That's how we're seeing it. And it's really powerful stuff, you guys. I love it, don't you? All right, so let's continue on. And let's look at these scriptures in uh, 1 Thessalonians right here. These are the rapture scriptures. If you were ever looking for it, you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and you, you'll see a lot of stuff in Thessalonians about the end times, the Antichrist, and how it's all going to play out to the very end. Let's check it out right now. So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6. For the Lord, I'm sorry, it's not verse 6, it's actually 16. But for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet. What does that remind you of, right? Of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. That means they're dead bodies because to be absent with the Lord is to be present or I'm sorry, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord, the Bible says. So those who die, our loved ones that die in Christ now, they are present with the Lord, their souls. But then here it's talking about their actual bodies being resurrected and made new out of the graves and they're united. Their souls are united to their actual physical bodies, just like Jesus has a physical body. Remember he ate in front of the disciples? Remember he told them to touch him? He was not a spirit. He was flesh and blood but he can walk through while he was supernatural he's like superman and we will have a body like his the bible tells us that and this is when it happens you guys right here we're looking at it in first thessalonians chapter four the dead will will rise in christ first and then it says then we who are alive who remain here where on earth together with them or will be caught up right that word caught up is where we get the word rapture from because in the latin that is just simply rapture we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so we will always be with the lord isn't that beautiful you guys we will always be with the lord and if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, my friend, you will have an opportunity at the end of this episode to do that so that you can be assured that you're not going to go through this most horrible time in, in world history where the seven-year period that is coming, the Bible speaks much about it. Book of Revelation speaks of it. Daniel speaks of it. Even Joseph's story, the seven-year famine speaks of it. And Moses' story, who was also a type of Christ, speaks of it. These plagues that come down, right? You won't have to go through that if you give your life to him. So now's the time, you guys, to do that. And you'll have an opportunity at the end of this episode to give your to pray and to be born again as a child of God, giving your life to Jesus Christ. All right, let's continue in the scriptures here and, and in the video. So at one moment in time, 
Jesus will come down with a shout of an archangel, with a sound of the trumpet. He will bring us into that place that he prepared for us, and we will be floating above the earth, I believe, in the clouds, kind of like Noah's ark, right? During that horrible flood, that time of God's judgment. And then darkness will come to this earth. It will come, and there's going to, all hell is going to break loose. They might think there's peace and safety at first, but then all hell breaks loose. And I'll watch this, you're going to see it. Those who want a world, right, with no Jesus and his people, the church, they're going to get that. That's exactly what God will give them. Exactly that. One world united, right, against God, against Jesus and his people. They're going to get that. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tells us, right after all those rapture churches that we just looked, or verses that we just looked at, we see this. Verse 2, for you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. Who else said that? Jesus. So Paul's quoting Jesus here. That day of the Lord speaks of the end, is coming like a thief in the night. So this is going to be a surprise. So it's not going to be like all this cataclysmic, horrible things happening and everyone's expecting him, right? You know, there's a seven-year peace agreement and you can count down the days and then he comes. No, no, no. He comes first, the first time to take his bride with him, right? Just like Stephen tells us in Acts chapter seven that, that Joseph, he was, right? He was rejected the first time, right? But he was known on his second visitation. He was known by who? Israel on his second visitation visitation. So the first, the second coming, but the first time on that second coming, right? The rapture, he takes his bride. And then when he comes back to the earth, they're going to know him. (laughs) It's so good, you guys, because God did all of this. He weaved all of this together for us. So the coming of the day of the Lord, he'll come like a thief in the night. So here's the key verse, guys, right here in in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. While they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. Can you stop the baby from coming when those labor pains start with a pregnant woman? I remember when my wife went into labor, especially the second time with my son Louis, there was no stopping him and it was pretty fast. It was kind of scary when I was driving really fast to the hospital. We got there and it was like, boom, they got her right into that room and he was born. So once those labor pains start, they they get closer and closer and closer and closer together. And then that baby is birthed. And that's what we're seeing here. And that's what Jesus used and Paul's using here to describe the end. So What was that previous verse? While they are saying peace and safety, this is what that great reset is all about. World peace, right? Then sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. And Jesus, my friend, did say this. So you might be a globalist Christian, which is kind of like a progressive Christian. You can't really be that because Jesus said the world will despise and hate you. The world hated him, he said, and it will also hate you if you're a real believer. So he also said, make no mistake, I did not come to bring peace to this earth, but a sword to divide it. He did not come to unite this world, but to divide it. And someday he will come to bring peace and unite it, but that's after that seven-year time, that labor time, time of great tribulation. Then when he comes back down to the earth and he rules and reigns from Jerusalem for a thousand years, then true peace and true safety will come, but not until then. All right, so let's keep going in this. So just as it happened in the days of Noah, Luke chapter 17, this is Jesus' words. 17 verse 26, just as it happened in the days of Noah, so it will, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. He's speaking about his return. People were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were being given in marriage, just like today, you guys, right? Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. God's judgment. That speaks of that tribulation period. But we're not appointed to God's wrath as believers. The Bible tells us that. 
So we would be going into that ark with Jesus, Noah being a type of Jesus, right? Because there was seven of his family members there, including him. He was the eighth. Jesus has how many churches? Seven churches, right? In the book of Revelation, the golden lampstand picture of the church with him safe and sound, just like Joseph's Gentile bride was safe with him during that seven-year time of great famine. Uh, Moses also had a Gentile bride. He was shepherding the Gentile flock, and then God calls him back to do what? To save Israel. But it was during a great time of trouble for Egypt, which is a type of the world. Amazing. God did all of this, you guys. So if you're looking for the great reset, you're all about this globalism and harmony in the world and all that. Hey, it seems like a good thing, but don't be deceived by it, especially if you're a Christian. Don't be deceived because destruction, sudden destruction is coming. That's what it says. That's what Paul just pointed out. Sudden destruction follows when they cry out peace and safety. I think it'll be like a great reset to them. Like if we're raptured up, we're gone. They can just cry out peace, safety. Everything's good now. The the aliens came, right? And they took those basket of deplorables away, all those conspiracy theorists and those right-wing Christians that believe in the Bible, believe the Bible's, uh, you know, take it literally, right? They're all gone. Now we can have peace and safety. But then what happens? Sudden destruction will come upon them and there's no stopping it. But there is hope, my friend. There's hope for those who desire Jesus. Have you given your life to Jesus? His nail-pierced hands, my friend, they're reaching out to you right now. He says, come, come to me, he says, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest for what? Rest for your soul and for your heart. Because only when you're forgiven by God, and it's only through Jesus that that happens, will you have true rest in your soul, true peace deep, deep down in your soul and your spirit, true uh, being content and having a deep, deep joy. Let, yes, us Christians go through hard times. Trust me. I've been through horrible stuff, okay? Through hard, hard times, but always during it, deep, deep down, I have this sense of satisfaction and joy deep down that I know I'm going to heaven to be with Jesus. I know him and he knows me. I know his voice. I hear his voice. I know who he is and he knows me. And my name is written in the palm of his hand, just like this picture. That nail pierced hand, I believe, is where your names are when you give your life to Jesus. He sees you in those nail pierced hands. You're written there in the palm of his hands. So if you've never given your life to Christ, you can do that right now, my friend. You're saying, I want Jesus to come into my life to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and to rule over my life. And I'm going to follow him. That's what you're saying. I surrender myself to him. And I believe in him. I believe that he died on that cross, which he did. And that he shed his blood for me, which he did. And that he also was raised from the dead. And he did. He's alive. The Bible tells us that. He's alive. And he's going to be coming back. Maybe soon. But do you want to be on the wrong side of that? Wrong side of history? Or do you want to be on the right side? Do you want to go to heaven? Or do you want to go to hell? It's that simple, you guys. If you'd like to go to heaven, you'd like to give your life to him. To be born again. As a child of God, you can do that. Just repeat these words after me. You will be praying to God, to Yahweh. That's you praying to him. Stop what you're doing right now and say these words from your heart to God. Pray these words right after me. Ready? Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. I turn from my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you shed your blood for me. I also believe that you're alive today, Jesus, and at the right hand of the Father. I choose to follow you this day as my Lord and as my Savior. And I pray all of this 
In Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Amen, my friend. God loves you, and he has a great plan for you, all right? Make sure you're getting involved in a Bible-believing church, or if you're in Israel, go to One for Israel or go to Jews for Jesus. Both of those are great ministries, and they will help you. They will give you fellowship. They'll give you material. Um, They've got Bibles in Hebrew, all those good things for you if you need those. And also you'll get fellowship, but also pray every day, read your Bible every day, and and just work on your friendship with Jesus. That's what it's about, friendship and relationship with him. All right, God bless you. Hey, don't forget to hit this playlist right here. We're doing uh, these series right now on how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. This playlist will take you into like Joseph's story, like we talked about Moses' story, how they show pictures of Jesus Christ thousands of years before his birth. So hey, don't forget to do that. I love you guys. God bless you.